Welcome to Cast of Cured Podcast. You're here with Jeffrey Freed and Kirkpatrick Miller. Today, we want to talk a little bit about what we mean by visual and spatial versus linear and sequential. There's a lot of people out there that get really upset when they are left out of, you know, saying being, being visual um, or they want, honestly, there's a very common trait with autistic individuals that um, I work with, which is they'll run down a huge list. Well, what did you do? What do you like about this? This, and then I like this, and then I like this. So we don't we don't want anybody to feel like we are saying that because somebody is on the spectrum, they are only visual. Um, and we're not trying to say the people that are not neurodivergent, right? They could only they're not visual at all. They could only do lists in sequential orders. Um, so we kind of want to clear that up a little bit. Jeffrey, I know this is something that you and I have talked a bit, little bit about, and it's a subject that I know um, has been brought up to you in terms of some people didn't relate to it. You want to jump into what you mean by when you say visual learners or visual spatial thinkers? Sure. Um, my, my take on it is this. Um, I've thought this forever, like since I started this work in um, the 70s, late 70s. My God, that's terrifying. Um, visual people take in information. I mean, primarily visual people take in information, not just through their eyes. They can take it in through their ears. They can take it in kinesthetically, through feeling. They can, they can take it in any way that anybody else does. The difference is they tend to store it visually. Um, when people who are mostly visual remember stuff, they see stuff. Um, that's the first thing that pops into their head. They see an event, they see a person, and then the words come. And uh, that's the way most of my clients are. And some of them are incredibly visual, more than, I mean, I've seen some amazing things. I've seen people who um, visualize so well, they can hold and retain um, visual information and lists and stuff like that, as if they're reading it from a book and they're not, they're just remembering a book. Um, I'm this way myself. I have an incredible visual memory, he said modestly. Um, and I see stuff. I don't really remember what I hear unless I've made the attempt to store it. Um, to people who are not visual, they just, they, they, and, and this is something that I'm, a, I'm a little shaky about because I'm not this way. Um, and I don't understand linear sequential people that well, but I sure do visual spatial people very well. Visual, um, linear sequential people, they remember conversations and they don't see much. Now, some of them can see a lot, but most of them can't. And when they are, are recalling information, they hear it. They simply remember the conversation or when they read, they sort of mouth the words in their head um, and they remember, they hear. It's like a, they can be likened to a recorder where I can be likened to a TV set or a video. Um, and that's a huge difference. But it is absolutely true that I can re recall stuff auditorily as well. I just do it differently. What I'll do is I'll see the person or see the event and then the words will come later. So it's sort of how I check in that makes me visual. And the, of the people I work with, that's the primary mode of learning. Um, storing stuff is images. However, it's, it's, um, it doesn't mean that they can't learn through lectures. Um, it's probably easier for visual people. Not Take the word probably out of that. It is easier for visual people to watch a movie. Um, and they'll remember the scene, but it doesn't mean that you can't, excuse me, sit at a lecture and turn the teacher's words into pictures and, and do wonderfully in a test. So it's not, it's a preferred mode of intaking information. It is not ex exclusive, um, except for the people on the fringes. And there's all just more than you think. Um, one girl that I work with who's autistic and gifted um, could sit in class and play video games without looking at a video game. She imagined the players in her head. She saw the characters. She kept score. And it was exactly like she was looking at a screen. When I read um, accounts of people like Nicholas Tesla, 
and um, Einstein, they literally did that. They didn't even need to make a model of something that they were um, interested in. What they would do is they, they just adjust it in their head, make, you know, make the subtle adjustments, rotate it and see it as if they were looking at them. Now, that is extreme, but I don't know that it's as extreme as, as some people think. And it seems to be occurring more. And that type of learning style where you really have vivid, um, sharp images, that's very, very good. But there will be corresponding deficits in the other part of the brain. And they might have trouble remembering stuff that they hear. It's a trade-off, like most things. And um, it's, it's you know, again, it's, it's not... I just want to clarify that all people with autism, most people with autism are visual, but not all. Um, there's not all of anything. Um, that's the beauty of the human brain. There's so many variations and permutations in the way people process information that we can talk about generalities, but not everyone is going to fit well, into categories. You know, I, I know <laughs> you and I have discussed this in the past, and um, for me, I, I actually would argue that everyone is visual. Um, and I'm going to use myself as an example because we spoke earlier about the apple test where you just right. ask somebody, you know, picture an apple in their head. So I am a painter. I'm a writer. I drew my whole life. So I closed my eyes and tried to picture an apple. Nothing complete blackness and so i was kind of stunned i was like okay i'm going to close my eyes and try to picture something else i can't do it so any person who sees me would instantaneously say you're a visual uh person person because i'm an artist i mean everything i do is visual now the fact that i couldn't picture an apple or anything in my head was a little bit disturbing i was like how do i write books and what it's really interesting is if I sit down and I start typing what the apple looks like, the image starts forming. Mm. So I kind of make the argument that everyone is visual. It's that you have to figure out how you, I guess, tap into that visual mm -hmm. aspect. For me, you know, we've talked that I can't remember people's names. I can't um, either. In, in my books, a lot of times the, the, little tiny details about characters are missing because I really don't see them until I'm actually writing. And I never figured some of this stuff out because I don't outline things. I just go with the flow. And um, what I, you know, as we've kind of talked about this, because there's a lot of people who say, you know what, I, I can't visualize anything. I'm not a visual learner. And so I don't fit into this. And for me, I feel like everyone is visual. And everyone is linear and sequential. There's definitely different degrees, but the key part is I know that I am still, maybe I don't, maybe I can't picture things in my head, but I'm a visual learner. So if I am looking at a screen and I take a snapshot or a screenshot, I never forget what was in that screenshot. If I am, <laughs> because I'm interested for some reason, taking a screenshot, that click, that action, that's that up, that up. the pace. Yeah, it just it helps me. So if somebody's a very visual learner and they're trying to study for a test, start taking screenshots. You'll be amazed. That's and I don't great. even look back at them. And I'll remember where they are in my phone. I have like five thousand at this point in time. Every time I try to get rid of them, you know, they just more pop up. But for <laughs> me, most of the things in my phone are screenshots. I have very few photos, and. Uh, I, it's how I remember things. If I try to remember somebody's name, I have to ask them multiple times. And the only way I can actually get to remember it is if I use my finger and I gesture and I like write the words. Yep. And I mean, I'm talking about simplistic words. Like when uh, I had a waiter, EJ, wonderful guy. I had to ask him like five or six times. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. It's kind of embarrassing for me because I don't, I just don't connect some of those things until I turn it into something visual. And I'm not, and like we said, how do you define what is visual? So 
I think there's a lot of people that get, I guess, pigeonholed by the vocabulary. It's and they, not they, exactly. Yeah. It's not exactly like syntactically correct. Like you had said, everybody is going to learn in, in different ways. But I think once you figure out, I still feel like there's that two different types of learning styles. And that is the visual spatial where you, you need to see things you need to memorize in, in pictures or in, you know, screenshots, as I said, and I think you have that other side and I can think of my mom and a couple other people that they will go through a book and read chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. They won't forget anything. She is great with lists. I can't even keep track of anything unless I literally have a picture of it. I mean, it's better for me to take a picture of the items I need at a grocery store than it is for me to make a yep. list, which well, is absurd for, for me. That's why I like online shopping for groceries because I can see what I need. You know? Yeah, the, 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 my point sort of it, it goes with yours. Um, we can generalize, and we're right a lot of the time when we generalize about visual or auditory, but everybody's different. There are many, many different, I guess the word, permutations. And generalizations are helpful, but you can't look at them like they're the Bible. You know, there Absolutely. are so many exceptions. And um, be wary of people that try to make it real simple because it's not. However, the reason that you have trouble and I have trouble with names is because we're not interested in the names. We're interested in the gist of a person. The person, um, the what they are. Yeah, not not the names. Um, and that's a very, very right-brained sort of thing. We're not interested in the labels. We're interested in the essence. And that's a whole different story from visual. That's actually worth doing a show because I, I really enjoy it. And the, the reason I wanted us, because you and I have spoken a little bit about this, rarely do Jeffrey and I ever talk about shows. Um, we just start. But this has been a topic that has been brought up at different conferences and places where People were upset about, oh, well, I'm not visual, but I am this, or I'm not this, and I, but I have this. Again, the for me, I find the the differences um, very unique, but I still feel like there's a lot of the similarities in how we would learn. It's just figuring out, like you said, there's no two people that are exactly the same. So what what makes people really great teachers is the ability to sense each and every individual and figure out how they give them the information and that is something that is very difficult to do and especially with you know you have 30 40 kids in a class it is extremely hard so it falls on the parents and the individuals to understand how someone understands how they learn and that's what our show covers a lot of. And I thought it was just an important like thing for us to discuss because yes, we bring up linear and sequential versus visual spatial and it's never a negative towards one side or the other. It doesn't really matter. We're trying to bring up things that we see more commonly. And I would, I mean, every single um, individual that I've worked with that is on the spectrum, and this is a hundred percent of the ones that I've worked with, have spectacular memories and they are definitely more visual, especially when I think of, you know, music or um, they'll go through history. And one little girl, I, there was a little bird outside the window and I thought it was pretty. I was like, that's a pretty bird. She went through the name, the species, their mating habits, um, you know, the time of year it's usually around. I mean, there was so much information. I was like, you could write a whole book about this one bird, that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. And I asked her how she remembered it. And she said, well, I can see the pages. I can see the book. I mean, so all of the individuals I've worked with learn better when I can get it, at least like you and I've talked about. They may not be as good at visualizing as maybe like I am. Maybe I'm not good at visualizing because I can't even see a, an apple in my head. But um, once somebody starts explaining or they go into details, I, it, it enriches the experience and suddenly I start learning. And so I felt it was kind of an important topic. And for me, my weakness, knowing what our weaknesses are, is just as important. I am not as good at organizational skills, at handwriting, at following 
like lists for me if i'm getting into a lego project like following the steps is like torture for me i would much rather see you know oh i'll i'll do step one and two oh that means i can do um four five six seven eight all together and i'll just i'll figure out a different way to put it together if i'm following it individually it's just not fun for me it doesn't mean other it works really well for other people some of my friends who legos are a great example they'll do every single step and they'll get the huge ones for me i just don't have that much fun doing it that way so i think the differences in learning styles are really still a vital topic and i feel like they have kind of faded a little bit because there are other concerns that are more pressing but i i still really feel like it's very important to me if i was going to go into the public school arena which god bless all the teachers out there that are doing that um for me i would try to hit all three learning styles in terms of kinesthetic you know touch sight see hear. you just want to hit every sense because if you do every single sense you, you're eventually going to catch something with the with the individual and then once you see them pick it up then you can run with that it's it's easier for us to talk about because we work you know individually with people um and so you know i i really admire people that can do it on a large scale but for the the topic i hope that do you feel like that cleared up a little bit of the misunderstandings people might have over the visual spatial versus linear? yeah it's a start but it's certainly not complete we can kind of go over it um i think it's it's a really wonderful subject and um, it'd be actually great to have somebody on that's a very left-brained linear sequential person so they could add their thoughts to it. Um, they keep us more on track anyway. So we will be back um, and we will have somebody on to talk about that. I think it's, it's a really important thing. And I do feel like for any parents out there, if you can figure out how your child learns, it's just a, one more step that makes it easier. It leads to higher probability of success. So you know, um, these are important topics. Jeffrey, um, I know you are actually in a different country and you still took time. So uh, thank you uh, for being here. And um, to everyone that's listening, thanks so much for your feedback and following us and spreading the word. It means a lot. So thanks Thanks. so much. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to Cast and Cared Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please share it with everyone you know. And definitely like, follow, and subscribe. Certainly leave a comment if you'd like. Let us know what you'd like us to talk about the next time. Also, in our show notes, there should be direct links where you can follow us on our social media. As well as reach out to us directly. Thanks again and have a great day. The views, thoughts, and opinions expressed on Chaos to Cured podcast are the speaker's own. All discussion is based on our own experiences. We do not and cannot guarantee the accuracy or completeness of any information. Chaos to Cured podcast cannot give medical or health advice. All discussion is based upon our personal experiences and meant for general and educational purposes. This podcast is not a substitute for professional help or for diagnostic purposes for yourself or another. Cast Cured Podcast always encourages you to consult an appropriate professional.